he has been eyeballing a fly. Oh, he heard me. He's been eyeballing a fly that was running around in front of him for like a solid, probably two or three minutes. He was laser focused on that thing. You know how toddlers, they reach a certain age where they're phasing out of naps and they fight it. Like you can see it in their eyes. They just get really cranky and they're tired, but they don't want to be tired. That's turbo these days in the afternoon. This used to be nap time and now it's just fight the urge to nap time, <laughs> which is fine. A very good puppy lately. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. I had to move the queen palm over here. This one was all the way down on the other end. Well, you can't even see it. It was down there. So the queen palm, I was looking at it. It just looked thirsty and gangly, which didn't make sense. It had four drip heads on it that were set to the timer and then I checked the timer and I was like, okay, well it's scheduled to run. And then I went to run the schedule on it and nothing was happening for the zone that this was in. That being said, I would say that I 10 out of 10 wouldn't recommend the orbit timers. I have three of them and I've had to replace two of them already in just a few months. It's not, that's not great. Well, I've had to replace one. I need to replace the one that this was on, but instead of doing that for now, I just scooted it down here. And Set it up onto the drip that's on this end to get it rehydrated because the poor thing just looks so thirsty. It's a problem with drip. It's hard to find a reliable timer that does more than two zones. When it's just two zones, I don't normally have any issues, but I have had quite a hard time finding a reliable timer that has four zones on it. They all have their drawbacks. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. Okay. You gotta go somewhere? All right, bye-bye. Uh, leave it alone. Leave it alone. Turbo, not for you. You better stop, good boy. Well, I left off in last week's vlog talking about how I needed to repot this Gloriosum and I wanted to order a special pot for it. I like my Gloriosums to be in a nice long, or not just Gloriosums, but any plant that likes to run across the ground that it's gonna take up a lot of space. I like to put them in an oblong or oval or rectangular plant or something long, so they have room to do that. I ordered one off of Amazon. I got some other fun stuff too, and this is, this is because one of the speakers was broken on my laptop, so this was in the dollar section at Target, and so I can put my laptop here and it bounces the sound back. This table, all these holes in it, it can be hard to hear the speakers. That's, that's why I have a child's educational mat thing. I don't even know what you would call this, but it works really well. Anyway, so I found a pot that was 13 inches long, and I was like, okay, well, that's a good size. And here's what came in the mail. And that, uh, sure, that's 13 inches. It is but I, I probably should have looked harder at the other dimensions on it because, well, that's obviously not going to work for the Coriosum. And it's clear, which is my fault. The listing apparently did say transparent on it, but in the picture it looked white. I'm not that upset about this because I feel like I can still use this. I guess there's some fun stuff with it. It's a self-watering planter, which I wasn't going to use that function of it for the Gloriosum. I was just going to drill some holes in it, but this is... Anyways, back to the drawing boards. <laughs> I need to get, still need to get a pot for the Gloriosum and... Well, now I have this. It's kind of cute. I don't hate it. It's not useful for the Gloriosum. Oh, and the iguana cage is over here because it's it's been cold. It's officially fall. Today is the first full day of fall and the low last night was 47. So fall really came rolling in strong, but it's gonna be back up into the upper 80s and maybe lower 90s here in a couple days. So I'm not that stressed about it, but that's too cold for the iguana. I moved the cage to where it would get full sun yesterday because it was a cooler day and then I put it, it's inside now. I'm not going to leave the iguana out here when it's 47 degrees. So I wouldn't appreciate that. And other exciting things I ordered from Amazon news, there's been a pot that I've been moving between my shopping cart and my safe for later for like, I don't know, maybe two years. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and get it. I've, I've always wanted this pot. I've been curious about it, but it just seemed like kind of a high price. And it's so hard to tell colors and whatnot when you're looking at things online. So I was expecting a, like a decent sized pot said it was an eight inch planter and I just, I don't know, I just assumed that that would be a good size, but here's, here's what came in the mail. And it, it, this is an eight inch planter. It is just barely, just barely eight inches. I'm not that mad about it because it is still a beautiful pot. I love the color and the trim that's up here. It's just, it feels fancy. Like I maybe earned 10 fancy points here. It is still, smaller than what I was expecting. That's all right though. My main concern with it was that this was going to be more green than blue. And to some of y'all, you may say that it is more green than blue. Maybe it is. I don't know. I see colors differently, particularly blues, greens, and grays. 
I, I don't know. I, there's lots of debates between me and friends about what color things are when they're between blue, green, and gray sometimes. Now, to me, that is a lovely shade of blue. Figured I'd move it someplace so you can see it under a different light. Measurement on top here is just the right size to put an eight inch glass bell on top. So actually, I think I can do something pretty fun with this. Something fun that's going to maybe earn me 10 fancy points because it's got the fancy people stuff on the edge. I just say that because usually when I buy pottery, it's very loud and colorful and vibrant, which reminds me, I do have a pottery hall. So you'll get to see what I'm talking about here in just a moment. Oh, and I got a new tie tool. You all ever used these before? These are fantastic. My last one broke last summer and I haven't replaced it yet. They hold your tape in here. I'm gonna move this. I don't mind it for when I'm editing a video and nobody else is around, but that's that's not pretty to have in a video. So the tie tool, I keep calling it a tie, the other word, the word that you can't say on YouTube, you know, the pew pews, can't say that. Tie tool, that's what this is called. Holds the tape in here, it's fairly elastic, it runs through here, goes up there, there's a cutting blade down below and a hook up top. i try and put this up against a darker background so y'all can maybe see what I'm doing here. So you just put this through, your branch, your vine that's up against the tie or whatever you're trying to use. And when you push it down, you come through here and give it a double click and that cuts it. And then that'll hold your vine onto whatever it is you're trying to tie it to. And then to reload it, you just pull it down and do a single click and you can just keep on doing that over and over and over. Totally unnecessary, but a lot of fun. And these are relatively inexpensive. I think my last one was $17.99. Now this one I think was 25. So like I said, I know it's unnecessary, but it just makes the process of tying things up so much more fun. I mostly like to use these when I'm sorry, I had the camera balanced on there to show you what I was doing before. I mostly like to use these if I'm putting things onto a trellis and there are lots and lots and lots of little branches, little leads that need to be tied up. Just makes things go more quickly. And this tape that's in here actually is pretty sturdy. So it seems to last and hold on for a fairly long time don't you on the towel turbo no towels so there's some fun amazon products i was disappointed with this but i actually i really like it i wouldn't spend the money on it again i believe this is 28 dollars, maybe 28.99 i don't think that this small pot is worth that much money that to me seems nuts i mean perhaps if it were something where i knew for sure that it was handmade and there's something artsy about it then maybe but it's just it's a pot from amazon but hey at least i'll get those fancy points because of the swirlies on top of my pot it's not even right is it don't fancy points come from like planting things that look like marble and putting them in front of a flat white wall isn't that what that's about now nothing wrong with that i know that probably came across kind of shady that my intention so yeah there's all that that's what happened there oh is it sleeping no he's awake it <laughs> and i also got the wire baskets the little cloche covers that. We'll sh I'll show those in a minute. The sun is awful. Let's go down there in the shade. I feel like you never filmed down there. Why not? Let's give it a shot. <laughs> it might actually be a little bit too dark down here. It's fine. We'll make it work. There I have two packages, both of them containing the wire cloaks, the plant protectors that go over the tops of or whatever you want to put them on top of. They're from two different sources. Well, I ordered them both from Amazon, but one is from Gardener's Supply and these are 15 inches, maybe 15 and a half by I think 12 and a half. So this one's wider and fairly tall. These are 13 inch diameter. And I just, I had a moment. I couldn't decide which ones I wanted because they're stupid expensive for chicken wire. It would certainly be more economical to just buy some chicken wire and make your own thing, but I just, Really didn't want to spend the time messing with any of that. There's a lot going on around here. I just wanted to go ahead and get these and I'll explain more about that later. The 13 inch ones came in a five pack for $119.99. The ones from Gardener's Supply were $23.95 a piece, I believe. Just out of a moment of sheer stupidity, I was like, well, that would be cheaper to get those. When in fact, it would have been cheaper to get five of the ones from Gardener's Supply. It would have been like, at what, 25 cents cheaper if you do the math. But the ones from Gardener's Supply didn't have free shipping. These did. It doesn't really matter. I just knew that I, I need 10 of them. I have seven here and I'm just gonna have to make that work. It'll be fine for right now. And here they are. Figured it might actually be a little bit easier to see them with the plastic on them right now. These are those 13 inch ones. Each one's individually wrapped and they actually feel fairly sturdy. Went ahead and I got all five of those unpacked. That's, that's what it looks like. That's super exciting. 
go ahead and cut open this one from Gardner's Supply and have a look at what theirs look like. Invoice, packing paper. Oh, 15% off the next order. That would have been, well, that would have been nice when I was ordering these, but that's for $100 and over. Although $100 isn't hard to spend at Gardner's Supply, that's for sure. That's the Gardner's Supply bill. Well, I have to say, I really don't know which one I prefer. I very much prefer the height on the one that was just listed from Amazon in the five pack, but I think the ones from Gardner's Supply look a little bit nicer. Kind of. Maybe it's a drop. The ones from Gardner Supply, they offer an extension kit that you can put on these to make them taller. I think it's like another $10. Maybe it's just a ring that goes around the bottom and will make it stand up higher. All in all, when it comes to just the functionality of these, I actually, I think that this is good. Having an assortment of sizes, that's, that's probably going to work out nicely. The reason that I got so many of these and why I'd like to have a few more isn't just because of the puppy. I had talked about the reason I wanted these in, I think, multiple videos was because, yeah, I have a puppy. He runs around. He occasionally rips things out of the ground. And I have some fairly special perennials that I'd like to get planted that I just cannot risk him tearing out of the ground. So this is for that. Uh, so it might, I kind of wonder if this might be more like a beacon that's going to draw him to the plants because it stands out so much. But what I plan on doing is I have some landscape pins, some staples, and I'll be using those to anchor those down. And all of those plants, once the frost hits and they die back, they'll be covered with mulch and they'll be protected until next year. But the main reason, aside from just wanting to protect the plants from the puppy, was because, I don't know if y'all noticed, I planted a lot of seeds this year. And did, did you see any of them? Nope. Bulk of all of the seeds that I planted this year, which is thousands, uh, that they all got eaten by rabbits and squirrels. So this is more of a long-term investment for when I plant things up next year having these bells to put over the tops of all of those things. And since they're gonna be scattered around the garden in different places, I did want them to look nice. And then there was a the laziness factor. This wouldn't be a hard thing to do yourself, but I just, I, I didn't feel like it. I really didn't. I thought it'd just be nice to have something I can stack up, put away when they're not in use, and then bring out and set back on top of the plants, on top of the seedlings when they go into the ground to protect them. And since they're going to be in the landscape, I just figured, this makes more sense because when it comes to like making things look super nice, I can do planters all day, garden all day, landscape all day. This takes a skill that I do not think that I have. And I'm not curious enough to find out if I do. See, they can just be stacked up and stored away so easily. That's nice, that's what I wanted. See how nicely they stack? I need to get some more, don't I? That's, that's not proportioned properly. Okay, anyway, so we want to look at some pots. Yeah, it's actually quite nice hanging out here underneath the mimosa tree. Things are still very backlit, but it's a nice change of view, isn't it? It's even better if there's something potted up down there in that container, but it's what it is. Next year, we'll get that right. Look at these pots. Was that the local? Well, you can't even tell, can you? That one's bright red. Was that one of the local nurseries here just a few days ago, and they had a bunch of pottery on sale? And I haven't bought any pottery this year because, well, I, I have too much. I'm trying to get rid of a lot of my pottery, but it's... I have a lot of small pottery, like that little eight inch planter that I showed you before. Really didn't need that, but I'm happy I got it because I do like it. But 10 inches and up, I don't have a lot of that. And look at how beautiful these are. Especially this one here in the middle, this gorgeous ripple planter. I love that. I do wish it had a glaze or a gloss on it, but that's something I could probably add myself. And it has an attached drainage dish down there, which I, I'm not a fan of those. I don't like them. I think they lead to problems unless you have something planted in that likes to have wet roots and not dry out. I'm not, I don't like those. That's not the end of the world. I can drill a hole through the bottom of the drainage dish. Here we have a beautiful orange planter. Isn't that fun? I don't have any orange pots. Fun yellow pot, which I think looks great next to the orange. And then the smaller shiny red pot. These are all frost proof, so they can stay outside all year on the patio. How great would those have been a week or, no, two weeks ago when I planted up all of the zinnias? That would have been perfect. Just they have the rainbow of zinnias planted with inside of all of these colorful planters. How fantastic would that have been? That's okay, maybe next year. The orange does look pretty subdued, but in the light where it's a little bit brighter, that's actually, that's better. It is a fairly vibrant orange. It does look more like a burnt orange right there, but it's not. And here's a close up of the blue planter. Isn't that fun? I love the texture on there those ripples. This would be great for a fountain. That's not what I'm going to use it for because this is very porous. It doesn't have that high gloss glaze on it, so I think that it would just get covered in algae very, very quickly. But what I do think would look pretty cool in there is just 
a simple grass. And I see a pot like this one with those ripples and that blue and how it's not shiny. And I love shiny things, but to me, I think that just a very simple grass in that pot would look beautiful. Not like lawn grass, but some sort of panicum, probably just something that's airy, low maintenance, drought tolerant. I like the idea of having a perennial in that as well. I think that that would look nice down on the other end of the patio near the doorway. It'd be so pretty. You got some airy texture down there. Things are pretty big and bold. Lots of big, bold leaves. I do have some dune grass down there, which is nice, but I wanted to get more grasses going out here. But the garden is, it's pretty full. I don't really have any spots to put any large grasses. There's not much room to put much more of anything really in the garden. So a potted grass, just something small, I think would look really nice down there. Probably something that will dry nicely. So it'll still have some winter interest. So it needs to be something with some nice sturdy growth on it because I still think a dried grass in there during the winter time would look quite nice. There it is, a fun little almost rainbow of pottery. I don't have purple or green, but I do own a purple pot that I will be putting into the mix with these when I get these planted up next year. I don't see myself doing anything with these this year other than maybe the grass and the blue pot, but I will be putting these somewhere on the patio where they can all be grouped together again with the smaller purple pot. And then I guess I need a green one too. I still need a green one to go with this. They had green at the nursery, but I wasn't really into it. It was a really dark kind of a forest green and I don't, that just wouldn't be right for these. It needs to be something more brighter that pops because, you know, try and keep it classy with the bright intense colors out here. Yep, more things. Just had a lot of things coming in the mail this week. I do need to get on top of getting a new pot ordered for that Gloriosum though. I didn't see anything at the nursery. That was the whole reason I went was to find a pot for the Gloriosum when that tiny one showed up and instead I just, I left with these. I mean, I could put it in, no, I couldn't. I was looking at them. I don't think that that would work. It needs to be something whiter than these. It always feels nice to get things checked off of a list. I've wanted to do a colorful combo of planters like this for years. Just haven't been able to find them all at the same time at a nursery and then clearance too. Pottery is expensive. I usually only buy pottery if it's on clearance. What's going on down here? Y'all look thirsty. Does the sprinkler corn not run? I'll have to check on that. And other exciting news. Look what we have here. Isn't that beautiful? It's just a standard plumeria bloom, but the flowers, they're so big and they smell fantastic, kind of like a lemony jasmine. I had talked about this. This is going to be repetitive too, because there's a garden tour coming up and I'm sure I'll say everything I'm about to say again. But I almost ditched this plumeria tree because last year when it bloomed, the flowers were red. This one had never bloomed for me before and they were really dark red. They just, they weren't pretty for me. Not They weren't to my liking. Maybe somebody out there would love them, but they weren't for me. But apparently there's multiple colors potted up here in this pot, which is not at all surprising. Growers do that quite often. So I now know that this stem over here has the pretty yellow on them. And then at least one of these other ones has just really boring plain red. Oh, I'm glad I gave it a chance and didn't get rid of it because just look at it. It's so stunning. I love plumeria. Got more ginger spikes. Oh, no, no, this isn't the garden tour. Stop it. I just have to stop myself. Hard sometimes. I just want to walk around and nerd out about the plants, but there'll be plenty of that in a few days. Uh, what is going on out here? Did the drip not run too? Did someone shut the water off? I hear utility stuff out in the street. No, but look, there's water on the ground down here. The drip ran. What's your problem? And the ground's wet down there? Oh, oh wait, hold on. <laughs> That's right. I completely forgot. The palm tree fell on it last night. Once again, queen palm had too much to drink and just went tumbling over. Uh, there was a storm and I forgot that, that queen palm was laid out all the way in here and I popped it up and just didn't even think to look at all of the damage. Holy crud. You know what? It's okay. This hibiscus, I wanted to prune it anyways. It's fine. Those should stand back up in another day or two, I would imagine. <laughs> let's hope. I had a fun idea for what I'd like to plant in this and I was thinking a Gartenmeister fuchsia, one of the variegated ones. Wouldn't that be pretty in the house with a glass bell on top of it? I'd have to keep it pruned to fit inside of the bell, but I think that that would just look very nice. So I don't really think any plant in a pot ever looks bad. I just like plants, so I'm not really gonna be too picky about what I put in there. All right, that's gonna do it though. Thanks for hanging out while I talk about all the new things that have been coming in the mail. I like those new pots. Do you like the new pots? Is it too much color? For me, it's perfect. The more color, the better. <sighs> really? That wasn't even a strong breeze. This, the queen palm's gotten too big for this pot, but it's not, I can't repot it right now. I think my next project's going to be putting some anchors in the ground down there, the ones that screw in and um, attaching some lines to this. That was not a strong enough wind for you to be falling over like that. Very dramatic. And I'm not gonna pick it back up. It's supposed to stay breezy. It's just gonna blow over again. 
I'm just gonna leave it there. All the other palm trees are still standing up. That one, it's just that one's just being dramatic. Hope everybody's doing well. Having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you. Pardon the background noise, but I'm in the video, so it doesn't matter. Like I said, comment down below, say hi. I love talking to y'all. Fun gadgets you like to use with your gardens things you're doing to get ready for the fall. Or no, it is fall, so happy fall, and everybody south of the equator, happy first day of spring. Yeah. This orchid smells so good with the core nights. Been digging out some of my fall candles. This one, hot cocoa and cream. Love. Love this candle. They don't have it available yet. Well, they have it in a single wick, but I usually prefer to wait for the bigger ones to go on sale. I suppose this is considered a holiday scent because it has those snowflakes on top of it. I, don't, I would associate that with fall. Is that not fall? I just, as soon as the weather got cool and crispy outside, I was like, oh, have to light those. They smell so good. Hi, pumpkin. I see you, pumpkin. So cute. Can you believe how big he is? I know, abrupt change. You wanna go outdoors? Let's go outdoors. The neighbor's mowers got really loud. Couldn't even hear what I was saying, which is a little frustrating because all I was really saying was, you know, goodbye. I totally smashed that bird of paradise again. I did pull that out. I didn't want to leave that smash underneath there, but it's what it is. I'll get some anchors in the ground so that that doesn't happen again. I'm probably actually, I don't think I'll even stand it up until I go to the hardware store and get something to hold it up because that breeze was not strong. It's palm trees, you know, it's a big sail in the wind and just whoop, they blow over. It's what they do. Looking for frogs, looking for frogs. He's so good with the frogs. Every other dog, except for Tucker, would be obsessed with the frogs to the point where I'd have to, you know, separate them and like try and catch the frogs and let them go somewhere else. Except for Tucker. <laughs> you just dropped your ball in the pool. It's kind of late for a swim. Anyways, Tucker, one time he did catch a frog and he immediately spat it out, like it wiggled. He was like, oh my gosh, that's alive. And he just looked very remorseful. All the other dogs, that hasn't been the case. But Turbo, he likes to watch them and like they'll jump out in front of him and he just kind of looks at it and he's like, yeah, whatever, and keeps it moving. All the toys out here, you gotta go for the one that's floating in the pool, huh, bud? I know there had been talk of doing a like nighttime garden tours, everything all lit up. But that's not happening because electricity's broken again. Well, not again. Last year, the electric all had to be changed down on this end of the patio. Had to change out a bunch of outlets and eventually got it all up and running and going. Now this year, apparently it's time to do that over here. Why do I hear you in the plants, Turbo? Where are you? It happens, just, you know, things get old. You gotta change them out. Not the end of the world, hopefully sometime before mid-October, there'll be enough power here. On the camera, it looks bright, but in when I go over the pool, you can see a more realistic view of how dark it actually is. And it's much darker than this, but the, have my F values turned up as high as they go here. So it looks a lot brighter than it actually is. None of this matters. But yeah, as I was saying, and I already said this before, but comment down below, say hi. What do y'all think of the, like the shopping and Amazon type content on YouTube. I, I get uncomfortable talking about the prices and all of those things, but I also think it's fun to get to see what people are getting and what they think of them. So that's... Turbo <laughs> found a coconut. He loves his coconuts. I just figured since I had a whole bunch of packages all coming in the mail at the same time that it would be fun to just go through everything and see what showed up so that's not something i'll be doing on a regular basis but yeah you know, let me know if you like those sorts of things i actually i enjoy watching those kinds of videos on youtube where people unbox things and review them it's not something i'm looking to do like full on ordering and reviewing things but you know maybe for the holidays like people have some gift ideas something you, you want to see tested out let me know i can do that it might be fun it'd be a regular thing because i like to play with the plants as much as possible i hope everybody's doing well having a great day and a great life and that everything's just going beautifully for you and of course as always and most importantly everybody keep on growing bye bye